I got a question to ask you guys. Sure thing, Chris. You know, you know who Zeus is? Who Zeus is? Yeah, I don't know who that is. Uh, Zeus is an is a um, a mythical what? Zeus is a mythical yeah. god, a fake god that was made up, um, I think, from a book called the Odyssey, maybe, but I'm not positive on that. Is that your understanding, too, Nicole? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Zeus is man's attempt to explain God as a mythical. Um, person, so not real, and yeah, and he's he's described as quite a um, plagiarizer or not plagiarizer, a womanizer. So yes. his um, his conduct is to, um, as it's described in these books, um, sleep with women and sire many different. Uh, uh, people and and from them and stuff like that. So thank you for blocking. Fine, and say it. Okay, and I believe in God. Okay, but guess what? I've never seen him. I've never felt him. He's never said any words to me. Okay, just like I've never seen Zeus or Hades or you know Medusa. It doesn't mean they never existed. They might have. But guess what? I've never seen them, and I believe in them just like I've never seen God, and I believe in him. I've never seen Jesus. I believe in him. If you're going to believe in something somebody wrote, don't tell people that other people don't exist. That's all I'm saying. If you're going to believe in what somebody wrote in a book that you don't know if it's true or not, then don't tell somebody else this person don't exist. If you don't know for a fact he don't he never existed. That's all I'm saying. I'm not gonna tell you God don't exist if I don't believe in God, if you do. You know what I mean? Just don't do it. You okay, Chris? Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like I have problem. friends that don't believe this aliens because they believe in God. Okay, yeah, I believe in God, but guess what? I also believe God just didn't put humans on earth and that's it and every other planet out there is just to keep the earth afloat no there's species on other planets i believe and you know what if you don't believe that oh well that's your that's your prerogative well we definitely can't now, force anybody else to believe something that's I'm for not sure i'm going to tell you that something's been that's been wrote, written about for years like zeus and hades and Medusa and Aphrodite and you know all these people that's been written about for years and talked about for years never existed because I don't know Hi. so I'm not going to tell somebody they never existed because I don't know it's the truth it's facts if you don't know don't say they don't exist hey Chris is he talking to you or is he talking to me I'm talking to everybody who's listening. Oh, I didn't know you could hear me, sir. My name's Peter. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Who am I speaking with, please? My I'm stepdad. Chris's stepdad. Chris's stepdad. Well, it's a pleasure. I have had the privilege of knowing your son for, wow, I think well over a year now. And he has been a true blessing to be around. And we are grateful to have him as part of our community. And I thank you for teaching them about God because I really don't know that much about them. Well, um, I believe in them, but I just don't know that much about them. Well, here's something very interesting um, that that um, Jesus Christ said that's worth considering. He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." And why that's such an important thing that he said is it's exclusive. It means there is no other way. Now, you can say he was telling the truth, or you could call him a liar, but you can't have both. So you either have to believe what he said, that he's exclusive and there is no other way, or you have to reject it. And that's what it is to have an exclusive truth claim. Does that make sense? 
It makes sense, but here's my problem with it, okay? And here's what I'm saying, and here's what I say to everybody, and people, a lot of people just don't get it. And, and I'm not saying God doesn't exist, Jesus never existed, but you sit there and read a Bible and believe what a human being wrote thousands of years ago. A human being that may have lied, that may have just fabricated all this other stuff, this stuff up. We don't know because it's in a book that we don't, we've never met these people, okay? We've never met one single person that's in the Bible. You never will until you die. Well, that is, that is very true. We haven't, we haven't met them, but we do have, we do have their eyewitness accounts. Does that make sense? Yes. So, and you don't know if they're telling the truth. Well, they went to their death proclaiming those truths. People lie every day. Oh, they do. God, I believe in Jesus, but I also believe that you have to, you know, have a mindset that a human being wrote this stuff. A human being wrote it. Liars write stuff all the time. They do. They're believing stuff that's in a book. So how are you going to believe this thing, this this book that's written thousands of years ago, but you're not going to believe this book that's written ten days ago by somebody that says, you know what, I died, I didn't see anything, so therefore there is no heaven. It's because you have belief, okay? And I do believe, but you cannot be so simple-minded and believe that there's a God and there's everything else, and everything in that Bible is the truth. Because human beings wrote it, human beings have lied throughout centuries. Well, here's my question, sir. Do you believe there's a God? Catholics have taken Do you believe there's a God? stuff out of the Bible. True. Uh, I'm, I'm asking you a question, sir. Do you believe that there's a God? Yeah. I've said that like five times already. Yes, I believe there's a God. Do you believe he's all powerful? Yes. Okay. So is it fully well within God's power to use men to properly communicate his word that he wants exclaimed to the world? Is he able to do that? Yes. So it's perfect. So it's hold on. So it's perfect, perfectly reasonable for the all powerful God of the universe to use men to write down exactly what he wants us to know and put it in front of us in the Bible that we might know what he wants us to know about him. That's a reasonable thing that he can do. Would you agree? Now, the question is, has he done that? And that's a very good question to ask. And then the follow-up question would be, how would he prove that it was his word and not, as you very correctly stated, it could just be men lying? What would be one of the ways that he could prove that what he was communicating was actually from him? Can you think of any ways he could do that? no way he can do that well that's that's actually not true because this is god literally, and, and we today in this world i'm sorry what you say or nobody else said literally in this world the only way he can prove no no I'm, i have to talk loud because the microphones are i i can hear you sir i can hear you there's no way in this world to me to me personally that he can prove anything that he exists other than my belief that he is all-powerful is to heal my kids. I've prayed, I've prayed, I've prayed. You've probably prayed. I have Many prayed. Other people have prayed. And if he is all powerful and like what the Bible says, and what anybody else says he can do, these kids would be healed right now. And so would thousands of other kids. But it has not happened. And yes, I will guarantee you, I am flipping pissed off at him right now. All right, well, sir, I'm please. I, I do run, I do run a family friendly channel. And my, my, we have kids on here. I said flipping, flipping. Well, you know, doing backflips. Yeah. It is a friendly channel. So I, I, I appreciate that. Rachel, you're going to want to get out of that water so your character doesn't, so your character doesn't drown. Okay. All right. But, uh, no, I, and, and I understand, sir, and we have prayed as well, and I completely agree with you. And the beauty of it is this. There is coming a day when all of your kids, and including Chris, and I am grateful for this, will be getting a brand new body that will work perfectly for eternity. 
and it will be a glorious day. Well, I, I, I know it for a fact because it comes from God. So, so, so here's my question, sir. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. That's what you are not getting. I am hearing you, sir. I am hearing you. I am hearing you. Not getting because you sat here and said that you sat here and pretty much told my other son that Zeus is not real and he never was real. Well, he's not. He's a figment of mythology. Unless my son is lying. No, no, I said that. I said that. That's what you said. I did say so that, sir. Saying, Chris is very truthful and he would not lie. So he was telling you to. No, 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 no. I did say that. Chris was telling you the truth. Okay. I did say it. He's well, a he's a false god. He is a mythological god. He's made up. He's not real. There is only one God and one God alone. And his name is not Zeus. His name is Yahweh. Okay, he's the God of the Bible, and he is the only one. There's okay. only one God. Guess what? Guess what? Yes, sir. What I'm saying is you might believe that, but you do not know that for a fact. Yes, I do, sir. Just because you read something. Yes, I do, sir. I know and it for a fact because it came from God himself. Know, nobody knows this stuff for a fact. And you're not going to change my mind on I'm it. not trying to. I believe in God. I believe in you know, Jesus. I believe you know the devil's going to rise one day, and we're going to have you know pandemics and everything on the face of this earth, Armageddon or whatever. Well, here's my question to you, sir. Do you believe in heaven and hell? Do you believe in heaven and hell? Sir, do you believe in heaven and hell? Absolute fact. What happened back then besides what people wrote in the Bible? Okay. Well, you, you've already affirmed, you've already affirmed that if God wanted to, he could write down his word through men and have it be exactly what he wanted it to be. So it is possible for God to have done that. You, you did agree with that. It is possible. So here's the question to you. Do you believe in a heaven and a hell? If I didn't believe in God, then I wouldn't believe there's a heaven and a hell. Okay. So where are you going when you die? To be honest with you, I don't know. Okay. I cannot tell well, you. well, may I ask you a question about that? Do you consider yourself to be a good person? I do, but I am Awesome. Good. I awesome. So may I ask you some questions about that? May I ask you some questions about that? Good. I do not do anything against the law. Okay. Man-made laws. I do not do anything against what you know. May I? The the type of manners that I can remember, I don't know them all because, like I said, I wasn't growing up in the church. Yeah. Well, may may I ask you some? May I ask you some questions about it? If you would like to. Okay. In your lifetime, how many lies do you think you've told? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. I've told quite a few lies. Quite a few lies. Okay, quite a few. We'll take that. So, so what do you call somebody who's told quite a few lies? What do I tell somebody? What do you call somebody who has told quite a few lies? Uh, an habitual liar. A liar, exactly. So, so what does that make you then, sir? That makes me. I used to lie all the time. Okay. Well, we used to do everything. It's always in the past. I understand they're kids, but I'm I'm talking about you. So I'm talking about you. So you understand that everything we've done is in the past. This moment now is in the past. So it doesn't change the fact of of what we've done. Correct. So, understanding that a liar is somebody who tells lies, and you've told lies, then it would be fair to say that makes you a liar. Is that reasonable, sir? Yeah, it's reasonable. Okay. So, in your lifetime, and I appreciate your honesty, in your lifetime, have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small, regardless of its value? Yeah, like candy bars and okay. stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So, so, what do you call somebody who steals things? A thief. Exactly. So, what does that make you then, sir? Okay, uh, and that's not correct. It actually makes you a lying thief. Do you see how they add together? Yeah. Okay, so have you ever used God's name as a cuss word? Use his name uh, in vain. Four letter filth word exchanged for the name of Jesus, for say, as an example, or something like that. OMG or something. To be honest with you, to be brutally honest with you, I've always my whole life 
have tried not to say like G uh, date, like the G. Yeah, you don't you don't need to say them. You don't need to say them. But but I I assume you have in your lifetime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in my whole life, I probably said it when I was mad. Okay. Maybe a handful of times. Okay. So that's called blasphemy. It's very serious in the Old Testament. They actually used to stone people to death for it. And it's something that God holds his name to be sacred. It's holy and to always be used with reverence. And and we, and I have done it too. I want to be clear. I've broken every single one of these commands. I've used God's name in vain. I, I'm a thief. I'm a liar. And it's one of those things when we look at it through God's eyes, we realize how he reveres his name. It's holy and sacred. And, and we use it as a, as a filth word. So last question, and I appreciate your honesty, sir. Jesus Christ said, you know that you shouldn't commit adultery. But I tell you, even if you've looked at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. So have you ever looked at another person with lust? Um, yeah. Okay. So I want to be clear, sir. This is not me judging you. Okay, this is you've admitted to me that you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. And you're not a good person. You're not a good person. You're just. You're, oh, man, me. Exactly. Well, you, okay, well, hold on. I'm just. I'm just. I don't believe that God thinks that if I look at a woman or I think about a woman, which, by the way, I haven't done it since I've. Good. Well, that's good. Well, just stick with me, sir. Stick with me because we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're making good progress here. You're just like the rest of us, okay? There is no one good, no but God, okay? And so here's what God says. He says, all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. Just one lie actually makes you a liar. And he's saying all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. And the Bible says it's allotted once for a man to die and then the judgment. So let's say today was that day. And if, if today was that day, and you're standing before God, and he opened the books in your whole life, everything you've ever said, everything you've ever done, everything you've ever thought, the desires of your heart, and he judged you by his perfect law, would he find you innocent or would he find you guilty of breaking his law? If he judged me by everything, you know, if you're going by his, you know, his perfect his law, perfect self, which his perfect law. Perfect. No, we're not. You're exactly right. By his perfect self? Yes. He judged me you know, as a liar, thief. Yep. Stealing. So you'd be guilty. Okay. So then should he, as a good and righteous and perfect judge, should he send you to heaven or should he send you to hell for breaking his laws? And to be honest with you, I'm not going to answer that. That's up to him. Well, he's made it clear. He says all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. So you have it on his word that he has to find us guilty. He has to because we have broken his laws and he's a perfect judge. But here's the good news. That's not all he is. He is righteous. He is full of wrath. He is perfect in his judgment. But he's also full of grace and he's full of mercy and he's full of love and he doesn't want us to go to hell, but he has a problem with us. We've broken his laws. We have a debt to pay. And he can't just he can't just forgive us without somebody paying for our debt. So what he did to solve this unsolvable problem by us is 2000 years ago, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born miraculously born of a virgin in a way that no other man ever has been. And then he lived a perfect life. He never sinned, not even once. He did everything that was perfect in the eyes of his father. And then he went to the cross as an innocent man. And while he was on that cross, God the Father shows up and pours out his wrath on Jesus Christ for your lies, for my lies, for your blasphemies, for my blasphemies, for every single sin we've ever done and every single sin we ever will do. And then he died and he was buried in a, in a, in a grave for three days. But right before he died, he said three very important words. Do you know what the last three words of Jesus Christ were? Uh, it's a blank on my mind right now. 
He said, it is finished. Your debt has been paid. The work is done. And then he died and he was buried in a grave for three days. But then something miraculous happened after those three days. Do you know what it is, sir? Uh, he, rose. he came back from the dead. You're exactly right. You know that truth. He came back proving that he was who he said he was, God himself, and that he could do what he said he did. When he said, it is finished, he has paid your debt. And he was seen by his disciples. He was seen by 500 witnesses over the course of 40 days. And he, then he ascended into heaven. And right now, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he's advocating for you. He wants you to know this good news because he makes you a free offer. He says he's going to give you that righteous life that he led and he's going to take your sins upon himself and he's paid for them on the cross and he makes you that free offer. If you'll but repent, that is to turn from your sins and to put your faith and trust in him that he is real, that he is the son of God and that he has done what he said he did when he paid for your sins. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And the impact he's had on the whole world is so profound that today is the year 2020, 2,020 years since his birth. And that is the man who has split time by his actions. He has given us proof today that you can point to to know he has existed. And now you know what he's done. And the question that you need to answer is, what I'm saying to you, sir, is this the truth? Or is this a lie? And to be honest with you, I don't know. Just like, and hear me out here. And I'm not saying God is real or God is not real. And I'm not saying that never happened. But I live, what, two, 3,000 years past that. I didn't see it with my own eyes. I have faith. I trust, just like you do. But for the facts, just because you read it in a book or somebody was talking to you, you, you truly, truly don't factually know any of that is real until you die and your soul or spirit sees it. Well, That's I, I, I hear what you're saying, sir, and I appreciate you very much for all that you do for Chris and all your children. And it is it is a blessing to know that he is cared for. By, by loving parents, and I love Chris, and I also am grateful that you have been so kind and generous to me to let me share the good news about how Jesus Christ has made a way for guilty sinners like you and I to be forgiven, and it is factual, and it is the truth, but it's your decision to reject it or accept it, and what I would encourage you to do, sir, is go to the Bible, read the book of John for yourself, Find out for yourself if this is, in fact, the word of God, because I think you would agree if it is, it is the most important truth that we can possibly know. And is it, if it is true, I want to make sure that you're there and Chris is there and all your children are there to enjoy this amazing God for eternity who was good enough to save guilty sinners like you and I. So I hope you'll do that, sir. Would you consider it? Well, I do you have access to a Bible? Oh yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, read the book of John, please. It's the first of the four books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the book of John and make your own assessment. Know what God has said, and then you decide, is this man in fact the son of God? Is this man, in fact, making you a true offer, or is it a lie? But take him on his word. Read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Chris's. Take God's word and make your own assessment. Would you do that, sir? Well, reading gives me a headache, so I have to, have, I have to either do it. Uh, well, you don't have to do it all at once. Read a little bit every day. But, but I will let you know this. Our other son, Chris's older brother, Nate, he read the Bible from, from beginning to end. And because everybody takes stuff, you know, interprets stuff differently. Right? Hello? I'm listening to you, sir. Can you turn your TV back up so I can hear you? I'm listening to you, sir. I can hear you. 
Okay. Then. I, well, I couldn't hear you because I thought yeah. my son turned his TV down. Uh, no, I just said I'm listening to you. So, sir, I am I am grateful for all the support and the care that you give to Chris. He is he is precious to us, and and we are grateful that that you're taking such good care of him. May I may I know your first name, sir? Would that be okay? I know you said you're Chris's stepdad, but it be oh, my name's Ray. 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 My name's Peter, and it it is a pleasure to speak with you. And Ray, would it be okay if we took a moment just to pray for you? Would that be all right, Ray? Yeah. Well, well just a second. I was trying to say something, but yeah, you can. Uh... Pastor James, are you on? Are you on point right now? Yes, sir. All right. So Ray, I'd like to introduce you to Pastor James. He's part of my ministry, and and he's going to pray uh, for you and for Chris right now. And and I know there's Nate. And what is your other son's name? Blake. Blake. So we'll play, pray for Ray and for Chris and for Nate and for Blake. And uh, and thank you, Pastor James. Would you please uh, pray for Ray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to speak with Ray today. Lord, we've known Chris for a very long time, and we've come to to love him and to to just enjoy when he gets on and and, and plays and talks. And Lord God, there was a reason that Ray got on tonight. And Lord, you have created a, a divine moment for him. So, Lord, I am going to lift him up before you, and I'm just asking you, Lord God, to, to give him that faith that, that that's needed, Lord God, to, to know who you are, that, that he would be able to turn from his sin, to repent, and to, to put his trust in you. Lord, I ask you to, to, to be with Nate and with Chris and with Blake and with Chris's mom, and Lord... That, that your hand would be upon them, and as they go through their struggles, as they as they go from day to day, Lord God, that you would you would show them who you are, and that that you are the one true God. And I just thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to talk with them tonight, and Lord, that that you gave us an opportunity to be part of this. And Lord God, we lift you up today, and we thank you, and we pray all things in the name of your Son Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Ray, thank you so much again for all you do. I know Chris has got a really rough time there, and um, I know he needs so much help, and we are grateful. I can't even imagine how difficult this must be for you and your family, and I am just grateful that he's loved. And so thank you so much, sir, for all that you do. Thank you. If you ever need to talk or you ever need prayer or or anything that we can do. Um, I have given Chris my contact information. I'll send it to him again. Please, Ray, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we are here for you, for Chris, for your family. Uh, we love you and, and we care. And and it was, it was Chris who, um, more than a year ago, when I first started my ministry, God blessed me with the opportunity to share this good news with him knowing that right now he is in such a position of not being able to walk, not being able to get out of that bed. It breaks our heart for him, but it is not always going to be like this. There is a day coming where Chris will be walking around and we will be able to enjoy a new earth, a new creation with no sin, with no disease, with no more death, with a, with a renewed spirit, with no need for any of the pain that we remember right now, Chris will look back on these times and laugh. And I am so looking forward to that day. And I want you, Ray, to be there as well and your whole family. And I want to look back at this moment and see how much God loves you that he would set all this up. So I am so thankful that he has given us this opportunity, Ray. And please don't hesitate to reach out to me, okay? And as you read the book of John, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. We're here and, and we love to talk about God's word and to, to, to understand it more and to draw closer to him. And it is uh, an experience that is going to help you understand who he is. And I hope you will do it. And we will be praying for you, sir. 
Thank you, sir. It, I'm grateful to talk to you. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Thank you for uh, praying for sir. It is, it is our privilege and blessing. We are grateful to know him. Rachel, are you still here, sweetheart? Rachel, Rachel's my daughter. She had signed in a little bit earlier. Rachel, are you here, honey? See you, Peter. See you later, Chris. I'm getting off. All right, buddy. I'm getting off. He's going. Okay. He's yeah, getting in his bed. His body's hurting him. I know. I know. I know. God be with you, Chris. God be with you, you too, Ray. Night. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good night. You, you too. Rachel, you with us, sweetheart? I think she's putting on a headset, maybe. Because right. I can hear, like, the shuffling. I gotta go upstairs and check real quick and see where she's at. Rachel, honey? All right, I'm gonna take a second and go upstairs and see what happened to her. I think uh, my wife might have had her get off for a minute, so I'm gonna go check. I'll be right back. And yes, Nora, I know that, um, but that is not where we were uh, going to be going with it. So um, I appreciate you pointing it out. And thank you, um, Emmett, and everybody who was here for that. And I know there are prayers backing up with that because um, thank you, everybody, um, for your prayers and for your support. Thank you, Pastor James. Thank you so much. Yeah, amen, amen. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, um, Chris is fully um, bedridden um, with, oh, I want to say MS, but that's not right. It's um, it's in something as muscles. I think it's either MS or cerebral palsy. I don't remember which one. Um, but he is um, he's confined to a bed, and he only weighs about just over 100 pounds. He's got a lot of tubes in him and stuff like that. So. Um, his family caring for him, they are um, so full of love to take care of him. And, and it, is, it has been a blessing to know him for more than a year. And to have the opportunity to share the gospel with Ray is, is a blessing. And, awesome. and yeah, I'm praising God <laughs> right now. And I'm really trying to keep it together. So, um, uh, we all got that moment, man. We all got yeah. those points in our lives. I will not. I will not. Um, not deny that was. That was. Uh, that was stressful. <laughs> that was. That was stressful. Uh, I just want to take a second here. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Please do your work. I pray you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right. All right. Uh.